shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's Andy from Big Mac's Workshop Painting Studio, and today we're painting a fantasy model. This time it's from the Mantic Range, which is a orc battle banner bearer um, for Kings of War. Uh, as you can see, just giving you a bit of a show around the model. Not a bad fit considering it's um, uh, an old white metal cast. As always, we're starting off on a black base coat, and I'm using a GW medium layer brush, and I'm starting off on a, on a skin work, which is a uh, model colours yellow olive. I'm going for uh, what would be more realistic sort of um, skin tone. Uh, I want it kind of weathered and uh, very, um, a very lifelike rather than the, the cartoony orc style what um, you often get because these are a bit more uh, real, real scales, uh, real scale sizes on the on the models rather than hero scale. Uh, on the inside of a cloak, I've got a uh, very thin base of steel lead and drab. It's going to take a couple of layers to build up. As you can imagine, I'm using very thin paint, and it's just uh, going to get a nice, smooth coat um, over uh, both of the um, areas. Uh, the uh, breastplate to me looked like it was um, made of leather, uh, and I started off that with rhinoxide. Now, I'm going to give a base coat uh, of everything, because as this is a, a black model with very uh, limited detail um, it's it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see so I'm going to get all the colours blocked in first so the next one is uh, the chain mail and the uh, some of the armour plates which is using Vallejo's uh, model air metallic black um, which as you know is a really good dark colour uh, great for your opening um, layers for metal work and you can do a lot with it uh, from moving forward from there a decent layer of the uh, metallic black on any of the silver work. So uh, onto the um, clothes. You know, it's not got much in the way of clothes. It's got a pair of uh, trousers on, uh, which is getting based in stern vermin fur. Uh, I wanted to just to um, take away a little bit from the uh, metallic work, but it's behind. But you can't really see it, so I wanted something simple to work with. I'm back onto the skin now, and I'm using yellow olive again, which with a touch of orcish dermis, which is scale 75's uh, uh, colour. And I'm glazing the uh, layers onto the um, uh, onto the facial features and the muscle tones. Uh, it's going to take a long time because of really thin um, coats. And what I'm doing, I'm just uh, focusing on the uh, wider areas at the minute. It's still a highlight, so I'm uh, predominantly uh, focusing towards the um, raised areas, but I'm bringing it up very slowly so I can spread this out um, over a long period of time and get a real nice transition. And as you can see, after a whole bunch of layers, it's starting to uh, layer up uh, really nicely now, and uh, we're going to get a really good transition. Kind of a pinky colour. Uh, so uh, you could use Cadian Flesh Tone, but that's a bit too rich. Uh, I was um, trying to bring the uh, colours up very subtly, uh, as you can see, and I'm just starting to get somewhere now. You're just starting to focus on the uh, inside of a lower lip. Uh, it's getting a little bit more pinky now, and um, really starting to add some um, tone to an actual flesh tone to the green. As you can see, it's starting to just pick up now as a uh, the extra layers are starting to show through and it's going to uh, start really blending the um, highlights in. Once we've got the um, layers down on the uh, mixture of oak dermish and yellow olive, we're adding some Caliban green as a wash. And this is really, really thin down as always. Uh, it's particularly thin, no more so than normal. Um, as we're just trying to um, stain the recesses and not keep any of it on the top, um, even so much as a, a little bit, the smallest bit of pooling would ruin the effect. So, what we're trying to do is just to thin out those uh, um, transitions and get a really smooth, uh, colourful um, model with a lot of depth uh, to the recesses. So some more of the Orcish Dermis yellow 
uh, olive mix and this is uh, again uh, back onto the highlights and we're trying to just smooth away any of the uh, patchy sections from where the uh, wash went down and we're going to bring out them highlights a little bit more um, because uh, pinkiness is going to start to show through now and we're going to get a really cool um, looking effect as you can see on that bottom lip it's really starting to um, show through with the colour a little bit more of the uh, Caliban um, using a really narrow brush now just to uh, assist the transitions a little bit just to smooth out those um, blends and uh, you just really start to make that detail pop so now we've done with the Caliban green we're going back to the uh, inside of a cloak and this is uh, Seal even drab with shrapnel, uh, shrapnel red by scale 75, and as you can see, it's a, a nice sort of um, ruddy colour. Uh, it's going to go into the uh, deeper sections on the uh, cloak, um, so it's sort of a, a recess paint, uh, generally focusing towards the darker areas, and it's just uh, going to add a little bit of um, depth to the inside of a cloak. So adding some more of the uh, uh, steel even drab and the uh, sharp null red and as you can see we're just starting to uh, bring out some of them colours a little bit uh, just to soften up those transitions and we're going to get uh, that nice uh, smooth um, texture what you want on a cloak so now I've added some Acadian Flesh Tone by GW and what we're going to do now is uh, start highlighting these um, these cloaks and uh, what this is going to do is going to um, just start really bring bring it in because I've went for uh, the Steel Legion Rab and the Sharp uh, Null Red uh, to give it a sort of a, a tanned leather sort of look so it's a natural leather and the Cadian Flesh is just going to start bringing up those highlights it's really going to make it look um, more interesting as if it is uh, the tanned hide of a, uh, a deer or something so these uh, highlights are focusing right on the uh, well on, onto the larger uh, spans of the where the light would naturally hit and this is just um, building these layers up really gently as you can see I'm starting to feather towards the edges now and this is pretty much pure Cadian at this stage I'm um, using the sort of a feathering technique um, still being quite rough these highlights are quite um, are going to take a lot of um, blending in uh, but I just need to get the colour down so it's uh, so, so I've got some, uh, so I know where I'm working with. We're not. This is not going to. Um, this is not a difficult technique to do. It's just um, it does build high, highlights quite quickly. So now I've added um, Moonray Flesh by Scale Seventy Five, and this is a great colour for highlighting skin. I use it um, on my um, human skin tones a lot. Um, as you can see, I'm just starting to um, feather it in right towards the edges now, um, more uh, more so than the, um, the previous highlight. This is just really focusing on those uh, lighter areas and just building up that hi uh, highlight, get a really nice tone to it. Now we're going to uh, start um, just feathering the edges of with the Moonray Flesh again. As you can see, it's making it look like it's a little bit worn and torn. Uh, very much like uh, the sort of thing what a sword would wear in, um, to keep him warm, so it's a bit bad. Um, now, so the uh, the moonray flesh feathered towards the edges is really just going to start to uh, bring that um, sort of worn and torn look. So a couple more uh, of the highlights with the um, moonray mix. This is pretty much pure moonray at this stage, and what we're doing is just to. Uh, uh, make the most extreme edges now just to give it a final uh, touch just to make the uh, the edges look really nice so now what we're going to do is just add in um, some depth to it now and it's also going to uh, allow the uh, transitions to um, blend in really nicely so we're adding a really thin wash out of uh, seraphim sepia and this is just going to pull those colours together, add a little bit of depth to it, but without taking too much away from the colour, which is why we're using a sepia rather than a flesh shade or something like that. So it's a bit more yellow, it's a bit um, lighter of a colour, uh, so it's a lot more um, gentle on the uh, highlights. So whilst we're waiting for the uh, sepia to dry, 
Uh, onto uh, the legs again, which is Miskatonic Grey going over the um, scape, going over the Storm Vermin Fur. Uh, just, a, just as a gentle highlight over there. We're not going to go over the top on the um, cloth work on the on the legs. There's not a lot to see. Um, the sculpts on these are nice, are decent, decent enough, but they are uh, a little bit behind the curve compared to some of the mo uh, more uh, modern uh, models. So um, it makes for a, a very different painting experience. So on to the armor now, I'm using Vallejo's Black Metal. Uh, this is my go-to metal uh, for um, base coating any armor. And we're going for an iron look, sort of look. Uh, so it's gonna be worn and torn, just like the cloak. Uh, nice and battered um, armor. But we're also gonna break up the colors a little bit with some, uh, with some other um, work as well, give it sort of a patchwork sort of feel to it. Next is uh, a sepia wash, and this is going straight over all the uh, metal work. And what we're doing with that is just to add a little bit of um, grime to the model. He's a very sort of worn and torn sort of looking character. Uh, that's so we're going to really uh, focus on that. And uh, this is just also going to be um, used as a filter. It's going to be only gently showing through the next colours. Uh, so it just sort of slightly ch shifts the colour slightly, uh, making it look a bit more interesting. Um, and the effect's really subtle but nice. So uh, whilst uh, we're waiting for those washes to dry, I'm going to put a Steel Legion drab on the back of the cloak. And uh, this is just a baseline colour. We're going to add some washes in because uh, it's going to be a, a much richer colour. Uh, it just gives us something to work with uh, without taking it too far away from my intended uh, colour, which is sort of a, a mid-brown. Back onto the armour and the weapon, and we're using Iron Breaker. Um, this is going to really start to um, make the armor and the weapon look a bit more like iron. It's a, a much darker, uh, more dulled steel than uh, metal than steel. Um, so, it's, uh, as you can see, we're foc on the weapon. We're focusing on, on the um, cutting edge rather than around the back, uh, as if it's constantly sharpened, but it's a really uh, dull uh, metallic look. We've done the same on the armor, and now we're adding some chrome into the iron breaker and again it's going to be used as a uh, general highlight keeping some of the darker color through and because we're using thin paint some of the uh, sepia will just seep, seep through the uh, this layer uh, just to change the tone slightly and it's just going to be um, used just as a general highlight but make sure you use it really really thin So now we're using pure chrome now, and this is just going onto the extreme areas of the uh, brighten sections. And what that's going to do is just really add those uh, sharp points to the um, armor sections, and also on the blade as well. And you're going to get uh, that nice finish on there, uh, which is just going to be um, touched up with a little bit of nylon oil um, once uh, this layer has gone down properly. Back onto the uh, blade, and as you can see, I'm stippling um, some iron breaker into it. Now, this is a um, an old knackered brush what uh, I picked up, and just uh, to um, add a little bit of uh, brighter, brighter color to the um, flat of the blade, while still keeping some of the dull, uh, the dull iron look as well, and just to um, adds a little bit of color and uh, gives you a kind of a patchy, clean look on the blade. No oil going on all over the uh, metal work. Uh, as always, it's thinned down. Uh, I use uh, about 50 50 mix of uh, non oil and airbrush thinners. Uh, obviously, you um, use whatever feels comfortable, but I do recommend you uh, thin your washes down as well. It really does help prevent pooling. Okay, at this point I decide I'm going to start breaking up some of the armor plating. I'm going to add a bit of Retributor armor onto his knee plates, so um, probably weren't his in the first place. And I also I'm going to add it a little bit to the helmet as well. And this is just going to um, break up them uh, flat, got flat silvers and uh, just add a little bit more color to the guy. And this is going to make him look a lot more interesting once he's uh, uh, all finished. 
bit of Balthazar gold is going onto the um, right shoulder pad. Um, unfortunately, I do miss uh, the footage on this one, uh, so I do highlight it up with uh, Rune Lord Brass and Psychorax as well. Uh, then a bit of a wash with Re uh, Real and Flesh Shade uh, once we've got um, the highlights in there. Back onto the leather work, and I do apologise for missing that section, uh, is Dryad Bark as the first highlight. I'm doing the same sort of style highlights as I did on the inside of a cloak, uh, so it's going to be sort of feathered, pulled out towards the edges. Um, I do get a little bit narrow at this point, um, start bringing the highlights in uh, too close to the edge. Uh, so I did have to go back and stretch the highlights out a little bit, uh, just allowed the um, transition to look a lot um, more interesting. Uh, makes uh, makes the uh, transitions just that much more smooth as well. After the dry bark, I've mixed in some gore for brown around about 50-50. As you can see, it's just starting to get a nice um, worn level uh, level up now. Is uh, and it's just going to start to uh, come together with these uh, this natural natural possess uh, progression of um, sort of uh, soft levers. It's gold for brown. I'm still using a very large brush at this stage. Um, not I'm not using anything uh, particularly um, detail oriented. So you can still get away with uh, a nice broad br uh, brush. And as you can see, again focusing towards the outside edges of the highlights. Um, and again, it's feathered in, so uh, you get a nice sort of line effect uh, as you uh, are painting it on. I've added some black earth brown by scale 75 in. As you can see, I'm just starting to pick out those highlights now right around the edges. And this is where I started to get a little bit narrow. And I had to go back and uh, pull the highlights in from a, a slightly uh, broader area. Uh, so, again, don't worry if you uh, if you do that sort of thing. Just go back in, uh, do the same thing again. Just extend the uh, highlights a little bit if you need to. So I've actually added a little bit of a so scale 75's high key yellow, a really vibrant um, yellow, uh, uh, quite high, quite high on the ivory sort of uh, scale really. As you can see, it's very uh, a nice vibrant colour, and it just adds a little bit more uh, life to these uh, leather sections. Now, and for this, I'm, obviously, I'm using a very vibrant, uh, sorry, a very narrow brush. Onto the banner, and the banner is um, based in peanut butter. Uh, by scale 75, uh, as you can see, it's quite of a quite a earthy uh, yellow. This is going to be quite a dirty looking uh, banner. Um, it's like it's, I'm trying to keep it all in theme of uh, the an actual um, soldiers uh, being in the theatre and what have you. So uh, back onto his armor. This is a mixture of Psychorox bronze and chrome. As you can see, I'm just um, feathering those edges right around the. Uh, Nice extreme tips just to brighten that armor up, uh, get a sort of a natural shine on there. And finally, just a touch of pure chrome by uh, Vallejo right on the extreme edges, and uh, just to uh, make that uh, shine a little bit more, um, a little bit more bright, a little bit um, over the top. And that just gives you that nice sort of um, bright finish right at the end when uh, you're, you're looking at it from a cut, uh, from a good foot away. The uh, knee pad and the um, hand guard is mi a mixture of scale 75's uh, gold and retributor. And again, I'm just focusing on the uh, upper half of the uh, model at this stage on the um, highlights, uh, keeping the uh, uh, a bit of a retributor armor showing through. So now it's uh, more of the uh, gold and a little bit of silver in there just to uh, add some extra um, life to those uh, golds. Uh, want, I don't want them tying in too much to the uh, browns around them. And finally a little bit of the uh, silver uh, just to finish it off. and. Uh, just adding that touch of uh, that last shine again. Again, there's still some gold in this. It's not pure silver. 
um, just adding an actual uh, bit of silver to the gold it just changes the course slightly uh, so you're trying to keep some of that natural uh, shine from the silver and the gold together as you can see I'm using a dry brush this, at this point and this is a dry brush of Mournfang Brown uh, our, uh, the dry brush I use is really soft I don't like the hard uh, dry brushes what GW make this is just an old brush what we uh, had flattened it out and turned it into one uh, find that um, softer dry brushes tend not to uh, pull too much paint off um, and also you give you a bit more flexibility when it comes to using uh, them as a dry brush whereas the, uh, the harder ones tend to uh, be quite abrasive on the model so it's a, a second coat um, with a dry, of a dry brush with black hurt brown now and on top of that I've added again some high uh, key yellow and this is just uh, bringing out the final highlights just on that fur uh, only focusing around the, um, the areas that are most likely to be hit by the light as you, can, as you know I don't dry brush a hell of a lot I really um, don't like it as a technique it's just not for me but for that sort of style cloak it works really well again adding high, uh, high key yellow this time to peanut butter and it's just going to start using it into the uh, raised sections of the banner and it just sort of blends that um, nice rich uh, dirty yellow uh, with a slightly lighter shade it doesn't change a hue too much though and just building those uh, lines up around 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 the uh, the waves in the um, banner again this is a little bit more of a hanky yellow into that uh, peanut butter so I'm not going over the top with the uh, bright yellow um, really trying to keep the, uh, the dirty look through but what we're going to do now is we're going to go over with a really thin down uh, burnt umber wash and what this is going to do is just going to add some real nasty streaks into it and uh, we're going to obviously just tidy up a little bit once the uh, wash is set uh, with the uh, peanut butter and the high key yellow uh, but it's going to have a couple of good layers of the uh, burnt umber just to really mank it up a bit get add some depth into the uh, model as well the skull uh, all the skulls on the model was done roughly the same way I started with a roco which is a kind of a sandstone color um, and this is just getting highlighted up with birch, which is sort of on the uh, realms of Screaming Skull and uh, Carrick Stone, and just building up those highlights uh, right into the, uh, the skull area. Again, I apologise for um, any of the uh, uh, missing footage, but with uh, all this virus going about, uh, my uh, head was uh, thinking about other things, so I do apologise for that. Uh, we're going to continue keeping uh, out more footage and as many videos as we can whilst we can. So do please uh, keep on checking us, on, uh, checking us um, up on us. Uh, we will be still working out, uh, out there, just getting more stuff out for you. So anyway, thank you for watching this one. An interesting model to do. It's uh, been a while since I've painted uh, something um, like, like that. And the Mantic models are actually quite nice. They did surprise me. Huge thank yous to all, all our Patreons and everyone who's subscribed. Please hit like and subscribe if you've never seen us before. Also, thank you uh, in particular to your boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, DWAC, Mark, Dave and Tom. Thank you for you. Uh, you guys are our top paying patrons and without you guys we wouldn't be able to uh, do any of this at all. So, uh, huge thanks to you guys. If you're interested in joining Patreon, check out the link in the description. You get early access to all our videos and uh, guaranteed entry to all our competitions. We'd also like to give a thanks to The Outpost, which are our affiliate link, uh, which is also in the description. If you want, um, if you want to get held of, um, if you want to get any of your uh, gaming equipment or uh, modeling needs, check them out. They're a really good um, store, local to us. Really friendly bunch of guys, really reliable. You get 15% discount on pretty much everything you can um, get from anywhere else, and we also get 5% store credit as well as a just as a thank you to us. At no cost to you guys either. So huge thanks for watching this, and we'll catch you with the next one. Stay safe, guys. Ta-ra. Thank you.